Hi there, it's the First Lady of Wrestling, Missy Hyatt, and I want to welcome you to my very good friend's channel, Tori Talks Wrestling, where you can enjoy great content and entertainment. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Bye! Mwah. Welcome back to Tori Talks Wrestling. On today's episode, we're going over the top five best WrestleMania matches of all time. So, Dad, what is your first honorable mention? My honorable mention is a match at WrestleMania 3 in the Pontiac Silverdome in front of 98,000 people. And I know what match you're thinking I'm going to say. Oh, but you're wrong. It's the Honky Tonk Man versus Jake the Snake Roberts. Honky Tonk Man had hit Jake over the head with a guitar and messed his neck up. You know, depending on whose story is accurate, I kind of lean towards the Jake the Snake thing because that guitar shot looked really bad. But anyway, they had to have a match. Well, Honky Tonk Man had Jimmy Hart, Mouth of the South. Well... They were going to be in Detroit, and they needed someone to watch Jake's back. So who do they get? Your mom's favorite rock star, Alice Cooper. Yes. So at WrestleMania 3, my honorable mention is Jake the Snake Roberts versus the Honky Tonk Man in the Pontiac Silverdome. Whenever Jake brought the snake out of the back, did Alice Cooper sing, Snakes out forever? <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, uh, here's a little behind-the-scenes story. Apparently, Alice Cooper did not like that snake, and he was actually afraid of it because it was the size of, like, three people. <laughs> then why does he use snakes and all his He videos? doesn't use giant snakes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my honorable mention is on here, not because the match itself is that great, but because of the impact it had on this type of wrestling forever. And that is Charlotte Flair versus Sasha Banks versus Becky at WrestleMania 32, for the women's belt when this was after they changed it to, from divas to women's so that's why it's on there not because the match per se is amazing just because it's changed women's wrestling forever so it was good i kind of felt like sasha and charlotte kind of was the carriers of that match and becky threw some stuff in there but it was good and like you said it definitely made an impact okay so now we're on to our Top five WrestleMania matches. And my number five is special for many, many reasons. The main reason it's special is because it's the very first wrestling match I ever showed her. Mm -hmm. And it's the people's champion, The Rock, taking on that no good Hollywood Hulk Hogan, brother. Well, here's the big part about that match. The fans flipped in that match and so did the wrestlers the wrestlers had to flip going into that match they had to they thought rock babyface hogan hill and then they get in the match like okay this is that's not what the audience wants so they flip during the match and it is a beautiful match it gets you going and you know it made her a fan for life so i'm, I'm always going to appreciate that match and so that's why that's my number five match what is your number five my number five is a match that, as a kid, showed me the first time ever what a plot twist is. <laughs> and that is Jericho versus Christian at WrestleMania 20. So if you don't know, the reason for the feud is that both of them want to date Trish. But Trish only wants to date Jericho. Except at the end, when you realize that she was with Christian the whole time. Because <laughs> his name starts with C2. The way I said that made me sound like Joe. Boom! Pirates! <laughs> Stick off from the ground! And boom, she was a pirate too! <laughs> so my number four is a match where both competitors actually had really bad injuries in that match. It's Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 19. A few minutes into the match, Brock kicks Kurt into the corner and Kurt re-breaks his neck just a few minutes into the match. And he wrestled the rest of that match with a broken... Neck. Neck. We'll leave it at that. I don't know why he did that. I, I, I was kind of zoned out for a second and then he pointed me and I'm like, oh, neck. With a broken neck. <laughs> but then... Brock attempts a shooting star press more than three quarters across the ring 
and pretty much lands directly on his face and is concussed. And he still finished the match. He's, he wrestled another two or three minutes, did a couple moves. And if you watch him go back where he does the F5 to Kurt Angle, he lands Kurt perfect. And he is, Brock is out of it. You look at his eyes like after the match, he is gone. I don't know how in the world he was able to take care of Kurt the way he did when he's out on his feet. And the match was great. The story they were telling leading up to it was great. It was just a great finale. So that's why that's my number four. What is your number four? My number four is a match that I loved whenever I was a kid. Which, I mean, that's honestly like most of these. <laughs> but anyway, Edge versus Mick Foley at WrestleMania 22. And the reason that I like this one, obviously everybody knows the spot where the table's on fire and stuff like that. And, you know, this actually isn't my favorite Mick Foley match ever. That's um, actually a backlash match, though, and it's versus Randy Orton. I don't know what year it was, but, you know. Uh, the fact that I can remember it was backlash when that's, like, the most boring pay-per-view ever is and that's good enough. <laughs> Except know. for that match, huh? Yeah. So my number three is a match that kind of spawned a whole new style of match for WWE. Mm-hmm. It's not that it hadn't been done before. It had just never been done on a major pay-per-view. Especially at this level. Especially at this level. And it's Shawn Michaels versus Razor Ramon in the first ladder match on a pay-per-view for WWE. And that was WrestleMania 10. So, it was a great match. They had a second one at a SummerSlam. It was okay. But nothing's ever going to top that one. So, my number three is that these two people had matches from different WrestleManias. However, this is my favorite personally, and that is Taker versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25. Whenever he looks up at Taker and does the, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's my favorite personally. I just think, you know, I mean, obviously as a kid, I was a huge Taker fan, so any of, of his matches are good. Well, besides Johnny and Lewis, but we won't talk about that. Um, but this one just kind of sticks out to me more than the rest. In my opinion. I mean, it was good. They told a great story. You know, the ultimate good versus the ultimate evil kind of thing. They have great matches. I wouldn't say, you know, you stole my number one answer with John Gonzalez versus Undertaker. Whatever. I'm joking. But it was, no, the Taker versus Shawn Michaels matches were great. But 25, I do agree with you, was better. All right. For my number two. <laughs> you have to give me a second. It was WrestleMania 7. Everybody else is looking at Sergeant Slaughter and Hulk Hogan. Except for me. <laughs> I was looking to make sure Macho Man didn't have to retire when he fought the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 7 in a retirement match. Because he was Sherry's meal ticket. <laughs> However, Macho Man did lose. And Sherry couldn't take it. And she goes in there, she starts kicking Macho Man. But luckily, there was someone in the audience. (laughs) Give me a second. Who was able to come in and get Sherry off. And she went to grab Macho Man. He goes, no! Because he thought it was still Sherry. Get off me, you devil woman. And he turns around and hit her. (gasps) Oh, (laughs) Miss Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Will you marry me? And the whole place erupted. There was people crying. Mm -hmm. I'm talking not just like one person. Most of the people in the audience had tears coming out of their eyeballs because they got them. Did you cry? Well, no. (laughs) But they got them. They got those fans, and they took them on a ride. And let's face it, Warrior was not a good wrestler. Macho Man carried that match but he had to have someone to work with and it was warrior and they they told a good story leading up to it where sherry was trying to get warrior to not have the match and he's like when all the powers come down from the cosmos and the heavens rain down upon macho man i will be there you know not nothing he ever said made sense anyway (laughs) but macho man warrior wrestlemania 7 from the beginning to past the end you have to watch past the end 
That's why it's my number two favorite. My number two is the TLC match at WrestleMania 17, starring, not starring, that's the movie, <laughs> but with Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys, and Matt and Jeff Hardy. So, I mean, this match is really awesome. It has a lot of really cool spots in it. I mean, really all those tag teams matches with each other are awesome. Jeff Hardy did an amazing swanton on the bubble ray on the table. And if he didn't break his tailbone when he did that, then then I am not me. Okay, because I had nothing else to say there. He had to have. That's my point is he had to have broken his tailbone because the way he hit and just boom right on his butt on the concrete, uh, it was a it was an amazing match. Show. If I couldn't do it, then I'm not me. What? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, mom. You had a match that you wanted to tell us. What is it? I'm going to take you back to WrestleMania 3. And I bet none of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's the slam heard around the world. Oh, you don't say. The Can-Am Connection. No. Oh. It would have been when Hulk Hogan lifted that giant up and he slammed him. It was the greatest moment in wrestling. I still remember it as a little kid. Me and my brother watching that on TV. It was, it was amazing. My number one. Speaking of Hulk Hogan, and speaking of Macho Man, WrestleMania 5, the clash of the mega powers, the immovable force versus the irresistible force, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> the irresistible force meets the immovable object in WrestleMania 5, the clash of the mega powers. Hulk Hogan versus Macho Man. And Liz was in the corner. She didn't know who to cheer for, right? You know. And they had they had a great setup with, You're looking at my girl. You know. <laughs> no, I wasn't, brother. I, I just like her as a friend, brother. <laughs> like, they did that whole build up. And Hulk Hogan had that very embarrassing moment on Saturday Night's main event, which was pretty cool they were on live television and hogan is standing over elizabeth in the back like over the medical area waiting for macho man to come in and he's like all right tell me when we're, we're set to roll and they were on live tv oh bless his heart and they said we're live and he goes liz are you okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then macho man came in and hit him with the belt the breakup of the mega powers That's how you shake hands when you're a mega power. Oh. So, it sounds like you're a big Elizabeth fan. No. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I have noticed on my list, Macho Man is in two of my matches, and Hulk Hogan is in two of my matches. Before we get to Tori's number one, I will point out the fact that Christian is in two of her matches, and Edge is in two of her matches. Mm -hmm. So... On to Tori's number one moment in WrestleMania history, and that is... That is Daniel Bryan versus Batista versus Triple H at WrestleMania 30. Now, I mean, you guys know I was going to put this. This one was the one... This was like my slam her around the world in the era that I grew up in. So, that's why it's on there. It was probably my favorite match of my childhood. And I just really liked it a lot, so... I think it was mainly just the emotional part of it than the actual match itself. I, I think you're right. I do think that is your generation's slam hard around the world. That is your Yeah. The underdog moment. one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, thank you for watching. Comment your favorite WrestleMania match Hold in on. the comments. But you're not allowed to put Steamboat and Rent Macho Man. They can play whoever they want. No, no, no. They have to come up with something different besides R Ricky Steamboat and Macho Man. That's why I didn't put it on my list. Because that's everybody's favorite. You're not allowed to put that one. The hey, we give you permission. Y'all yeah. put whoever you want. Yeah. Don't listen to Dad. This ain't his show. Like, <laughs> comment, share, subscribe. Go in the description, check out my merch store, and my other channels. Bye. Hey. hey. The irresistible force versus the irresistible force. <laughs> it means the immovable force. <laughs> it's two forces in one. <laughs> this is Hall of Famer Tito Santana here to tell you to subscribe to Tory Talks Wrestling. Hit that like button and the notification bell 
to make sure you don't miss out on all the action. Do it, or I will have to hit you with the flying forearm. Arriba! Adios. Goodbye. And Tori now has merch. Go check it out at bonfire.com. Link in the description and under the About tab. Bye.